this because they're cheap, you buy them because they're good and they work. This is Joe. He started selling potato peelers in 1993. He sold so many he became a millionaire. First we'll listen to Joe's pitch, then we'll learn how to sell potato peelers. You hold it in the other hand and you've got those lovely carrot sunflowers. And you do that for the kids, they'll eat all their veggies, I'm not thinking candy. When you peel a potato, it doesn't matter whether you're right-handed, left-handed, like a politician underhanded. All you take off that potato, or any other fruit and vegetable, is a thin layer of skin. You've got no waste to do it record time. Everybody's got one like this, they take too long. Grandma gets arthritis, she can't hold that. You let those slices go into hot oil and watch them go brown, you're gonna love the potato chip. You can't buy them in the stores, they're made in Switzerland, they're not made in China. They're five dollars each, they're worth every penny. They last a lifetime. Joe makes it look effortless, but in reality, his pitch follows the oldest sales technique in the book, good old AIDA. First Joe gets the crowd's attention, then he creates interest, then desire, and finally, action. Let's start with attention. Before Joe begins his pitch, he pulls the crowd in close. I come up a yard, you'll see better come up. Once he's got their attention, he holds it. His language is direct, peppered with personal pronouns. His sentences are punchy, the majority seven words or less, and his word choice is simple, 80% are just one syllable. And when Joe does use more elaborate language, there's a purpose to it, often the punchline to a joke. Like a politician underhanded. They're made in Switzerland, they're not made in China. <laughs> it's like if Bukowski wrote a sales pitch. Short sentences, simple words, fast points. Bim, 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 bim. So Joe's got your attention. How does he create interest? Okay, imagine your friend is trying to persuade you to go on a blind date with this guy. She tells you he's too dark and handsome. The first thing you'd say is, show me a picture. We don't want to be told, we want to be shown. Joe doesn't talk about the sharpness of the peeler. He just peels the potato in record time. Then he peels the carrot, then he gets you to peel the carrot. So Joe burns through carrots and potatoes all for your own enjoyment. You see a big pile of peel, you feel indebted, you buy a peeler. This is Caldini's rule of reciprocation. I am obligated to give back to you the form of behavior that you first give to me. Whilst Joe's hands show you features, his language sells you benefits. Nobody wants a new peeler, but we all want the potato chips, or the kids to eat their vegetables, or to not get arthritis. This is called value-based messaging. Add some scarcity, you can't buy them in the store, and you get desire. All that's left to do is close the sale. Joe does this without ever asking for anyone's money. People are happy to buy, but they hate being sold to. The trick is to let the customer make the decision on their own terms. Joe takes a wad of notes out of his pocket and moves the peelers to centre stage. The crowd reads his signal and proceeds to hand over their money. No income tax, no VAT, no money back, and no guarantee. Okay, last thing. I read this line the other day that I think sums up Joe's success. All things being equal, people buy from their friends. So make everything else equal, then go make a lot of friends. Joe's likeable, he's got a twinkle in his eye, he's full of charisma. And I think more than any salesmanship, that's what makes the difference. <laughs> they call me a New York legend. That's how crazy this town is. <laughs> My first video, thanks for watching. Feedback's welcome. If you liked it, please subscribe. For more, check out marketingexamples.com.